Welcome, Cleaning Nation. I am so excited to hang out with you all today. If you are one of the ones that want to take it to the next level and hang out with me and a few of your fellow owners close up and personal, go to growmancleaningcompany.com forward slash live right now to get the details on our upcoming live event where I'm going to implement the entire clean profit method with you. Cleaning Nation, welcome to another episode of the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast. For all of you hardcore, diehard fans, uh, we uh, last last episode we had Joshua Latimer, founder of SendGym.com, <laughs> this magical software company that we're diving into. Uh, we we were just just about to have a bunch of fun because I'm a big fat jerk. I teased you and, and cut it off until today. Well, it's back. You're ready. We're going to go even deeper on how you can absolutely build a lever in your business that you can pull. And as Joshua says, shiny brand new customers come out uh, at the drop of a hat just to remember uh, he started uh, delivering pizza in a trailer park he uh, started a window cleaning business and just had nothing but brick walls and ceilings and couldn't get through it until he discovered the magic of systems once he did that he was able to trans uh, transform his business into an automated machine started the software company that we're going to talk about today a lot it started a podcast moved to Costa Rica for a bit hung out with his five kids and uh, really kind of just had the business uh, uh, and the the lifestyle that we all get in this business for. So, Joshua, welcome back, my friend. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> it was so much fun the first time. I can't wait to keep going. Yeah, and if you if you missed the first episode, please, 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 we are going to assume that you know all that stuff and kind of build on it. So, I would highly recommend if you didn't get the first one, go back, grab that, and then come back here so all this stuff will make sense. So, when we left off, we uh, talked about a an offer, and I'll give that offer again at the end of this of all the cool things that you can get at Send Gym. And as I was reading it, I'm like, how do we not go deep into this in the in the dang podcast? So. First of all, I lo- well, no, actually, I'm, right, I'm going to stay disciplined. I'm going to be good. We're going to finish the conversation we had before, and then we're going to talk about all the cool stuff Send Jim had. So when we left off, we had talked about Joshua had discovered a way to do postcards. I got about a 1% response rate and response meant booking. 1% of the people that he sent that to became a customer. So if he sent 100, one person would become a customer. And you're just about to talk about how you kind of supercharged that and made it better. I would love to hear that story, and then we'll make it even better, better with all the cool stuff that you can do with um, things other than postcards. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of better, better. So we are totally going to do that. <laughs> so what happened was we did have a scalable lever, as I call it. I call it a lever. I'm kind of visual, so I have to like have characters in my brains of things. But we were doing these postcards that we would pass out by hand. They had a real price on them, an expiration date. They were just very carefully crafted, and we had the right scripting for our sales team when people would call, and everything was working. But I wanted to see if I could push deeper or if I could get an even bigger result. Even though it was working, uh, what we came up with ended up having an almost five times greater result. So for every 100, we're booking five customers instead of one. And the main difference, there's two differences. Number one is we hyper-personalized the postcards by adding a picture of their home on the front of the postcard. Uh, I still had a real price on it. And it was still strategically sent to the right people at the right time of year and all that stuff. But it had a picture of their house. So as you stand over your junk mail garbage, you know, you got your junk mail in your hand, you're over your garbage can. You really have like micros of a second to capture someone's attention, right? Most direct mail goes in the garbage can, just like most Facebook ads, people zip by them before they see it. It's true with anything, right? So as they're throwing away the card, they give a little, they put the brakes on like, like, wait a second, is this my house? (laughs) Or if you're in a, area of the country where people would freak out if you do that you use a picture of the entryway of the of the neighborhood or the gated community or whatever anything to personalize it so we started doing that and then the second or if you want if you want to get about a hundred percent engagement response rate take a picture of their kid leaving school no, I'm t- I'm t- I'm t- I'm t- <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was evil I, mike just came out for one that second. would definitely get engagement <laughs> Uh, for sure. Uh, the yeah. wrong kind, but definitely. That's probably one of the ones I should have kept um, to myself. But so, <laughs> yeah, you, you would get about 100% response rate. Go so ahead. personalization is a huge deal, especially now with all the white noise and I'll, everybody's over-marketed to our attention span has went down greatly due to technology. There's all kinds of studies on it. But the second thing that I was missing with my original approach was that every time we would market, we would really hit these people one time. And it was manual. Like I had to send out an army of people to go put these these cards like in people's newspaper box or on the front door or whatever. And when I had completed that, we had touched them one time. 
And we would circle back and try to get the same neighborhoods later, but it would be really spread out, right? So what we did with our software is we made it so it would personalize it, but we also made it so it does drip sequences of actual postcards. So it doesn't hit them one time. It hits them three to five times spread out a week apart during the perfect time of year with a picture of their house on it. Obviously, people notice it, right? So you'll typically get more calls and more jobs on your third mailing than you did on your first. And this is another reason why people that dabble with any kind of marketing struggle. And, you know, when you're small, you don't have the money to, like, waste on that stuff. So then what happens is because we have fear, we, we go into our turtle shell and panic, and we just basically hope and pray that things work out, right? So, you know, I, I don't want that to happen for people because it happened to me. And I didn't have $5,000 to waste on a radio commercial that didn't work, but that happened to me. <laughs> it's because I didn't go deep. That's the key. So let me ask you one thing, because this is a huge point, and I know Clean Nation is screaming it, and I want to make sure I ask it on their behalf. Um, and I, I know the answer, but I want to make sure we all get the answer. If I have got, say it costs a dollar a piece just to make money easy uh, to send out some, some cards, and I've got $3,000 should I spend $3,000 to send one piece to 3,000 people or $3,000 to spend, send three pieces to 1,000 people? You have to send it to 1,000 people three times, hand down, hands down, no exceptions, no excuses. That would always win. Perfect. I, I love that. And I just wanted to be, and you said that, but I wanted to make yeah. sure it was so drop you know, and clear so, that nobody three left here. Though, not like, we're making sure we're sending to the right people at the right time of year, at the right offer, the right cop, all that other stuff we talked about in the first podcast. But uh, but yes, that, that, is the, that is the secret weapon. But the problem is, Mike, is how do you do that manually with a small team? I mean, I, I don't know about you in the early days of your company, but I was the HR department, the customer service, the sales guy, the marketer, the technician, the cleaner. I changed my own brake pads. I went to the bank. I did all the CRM stuff. <laughs> like you're doing all this stuff. And so to create a lever or system to scale marketing is totally overwhelming. It feels overwhelming. Uh, it's easier when you have a big team, but when you're small, it's really hard. So even when you do get uh, some availability to go out and do marketing, you're only doing one touch, and it doesn't work as good. Nice. That's what the the hard part. So is. let me t let me totally play devil's advocate, not because I don't love you, because I do, but I know that this is the fear, and I want to make sure just we overcome it. Okay. So speaking for Cleaning Nation, well, yeah, but Joshua, you don't understand. I'm going to go to SendGym.com, and I'm going to spend a thousand dollars with your thing, and I'm sure you're some magical guy that can make it work. But I'm going to not make any money, and you don't understand. You're rich, and you can afford all this marketing, but I'm poor, and I can't afford any marketing. And you know, you got burned in radio, but I'm going to get burned with direct mail. Talk to me. Make hold my hand, pat my head, make me feel better, Joshua. Well, the first thing you don't want to do is go sign up for Send Gym and send a thousand cards. The first thing you do is you go to Send Gym, you can get a free trial, and start consuming all the educational content because you're going to have massive light bulbs Love start it. to go off because you want to test and split test things at a small scale before you, you know, roll it out to the world. We also have this tool might call the Radius Bomb. It's included inside of Send Gym, but it's literally like a, ma a Google Map. And you can zoom over single houses or entire neighborhoods. You can draw a polygon or a circle around an area of homes you want to mail to. Click a button and it will send them mail, right? And it's amazingly compelling. When people see it, they freak out. They're like, this is the coolest thing ever. But what they do wrong is they, they go in there, they circle a big area because they're excited. They click a button and they're hoping and praying, right? It's like shotgun. It's like, please, buy my stuff. Yep. <laughs> <When> <laughs> Hit something, right? please. So it's about going slow in the beginning making sure you understand what you're doing. You understand uh, who to send to at the right time of year, which we teach you all of that stuff because this is what we do. This is how I built my company and, you know, eventually sold it. Um, so get the education first and then you do uh, small split tests and until you get some data, you know, because every market's a little different. Your offer might be off. You might be doing little things that are fixable, but you might be doing them wrong. Let's spend like 50 bucks and test something or a hundred Love until it. we get something that pops then we scale it up after that so gosh the, you answer one question I, I brings up 47 more so first and foremost let's finish the story with okay so you you sent you were handing out postcards that already had the right neighborhood right that's huge again if you're putting this in rented houses or low low income uh type places it doesn't matter how good your message offers you're gonna have a tough time. So you put on the right house, you had two pieces of personalization, I'm guessing. One was, I'm guessing it wasn't to current resident, it was to Mike, right, at my address or, or whoever was getting it. Two, you had a price that was for them with an expiration date. So you already had two pieces of customization. You were getting about a 1% buy rate off of those uh, those pieces. And now you said, I'm going to add a third 
customization piece, which is a picture of their home on top of the other stuff. I'm assuming you didn't quit that other, that other stuff. Um, and then even saying we're going to send a, or a picture of a neighbor's home. What was the new rate for that? What was your, if you did 1% with kind of version 1.0, I'm sure for you it was actually version it was, 12. It was but 5%. The first version we've talked about. What yeah, happened? it was, it was wow, five so times 5X. higher for us in our market. But to, just to be fair here, it depends. Like Please. if you're a roofer, you know, that's a $50,000 product. It's different, right? So each market's a little bit different as far as timing and all that stuff. Uh, but for us, that's what it was. And that is a regular result to people that go deep and figure it out and like, and get something that's working. But no matter what it is, it's going to be higher than standard direct mail, just based solely on logic. Okay. This isn't like, just, just, let's just put our logic hat on. What would work better? A general thing that says we exist, call our phone number or a, a personalized photo with an actual price to weed out tire kickers and to pre-qualify people with a, you know, an expiration date, which creates urgency and scarcity, right? Like, obviously that works better, but the, and, then, and then also hits them multiple times in a row, right? So like, just common sense, we know it would work better. The trick is, is just to start building that for our company and our market, listening to homeowners, figuring out where the pain points are, how do we word things? Because it does vary in different re- regions of the country, but once you have it, it's like having the keys to the kingdom. You know, it's like, what do you want to do? How do you want a $600,000 automated business where you work 10 hours a week so that you can be the T-ball coach and be your, the youth pastor at your church for free? Like, what do you want? Because if you don't create a lever using any type of marketing, this or otherwise, you can't have that. And growing your business feels like you're guessing. And I'm sure there's no way people aren't <laughs> resonating with that because that's exactly what it felt like for me. It felt like, like hope and luck. Like, I hope that my business grows rather than uh, we're going to generate, you know, you know, $1.2 million in new sales by doing this. We're going to reverse engineer it. Here's what it is. Here's blah, 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 down to daily tasks. Well, if you haven't created a marketing lever that's reliable, you can't do that. And it, it just causes a lot more stress. It's, it's a horrible way to do business, but unfortunately 96% of businesses uh, don't have that lever in place. They just don't. I, honestly, that sounds conservative. I would guess it's higher than, based on just the people I coach with, I would guess it's a lot higher than uh, 96% don't have it. So let's walk through some numbers. So again, I still I still get a little of this like, oh, it's, it's it, I'm not going to be able to afford it. It won't work. Too good to be true. So what does it cost to send a postcard? So we can kind of figure like how many, you know, can I can I make it work with just the 1% or the half a percent or do I need 5%? So what's it cost to send, uh, let's say three postcards because you, you're saying you're coaching best practices. If you're going to do a test, test 100 people with three postcards as opposed to 300 people with one postcard. Right. right. Yep. And so it costs two dollars and seven cents to send three of our postcards. They're sixty nine cents each, and it includes postage and everything. They're super high quality. You know, all the fancy whatever thick card stock. They're nice. Uh, but what's really cool about our system that's different than any other direct mail too is that there's no minimums that you send. So people use these our our system every day just to send thank you cards. So you can send one card Beautiful. by clicking one button and it costs 69 cents. Like, <laughs> like you can't do that like without this tool. Um, and you can do really small batches and sample sizes. If you do other types of direct mail programs, you have to like buy a list or you have to do minimums. You got to send at least to 800 people or with every door direct mail, you have to send to the entire carrier route. And it's not like that that's bad. It just doesn't give you the type of flexibility that, that we offer. When you can't test, or you can test, but you can't test without a without a large budget. Exactly. When you when you can, and again, to be fair, one is not a test, right? I, I would say probably no, this yeah. is probably not even statistically <laughs> accurate, but small. at least a hundred, at least a hundred times three, probably closer to a thousand. But to say, and I'm just going to round. I know you said two dollars and seven cents, but that would break my brain. So two bucks, I can send one person three postcards over. And what do you recommend? I'm sure it's on the site, but what do you recommend? Every every week, every two weeks, every month? What's what's a good frequency to start? And I get different different markets, different things. But what's a give me a ballpark of uh, what time of year to send? Is that what you're asking? How, no, how often? Oh, so I send how every often? week, every two weeks, every month. Well, every quarter. I, we yeah. typically do a, a week apart, three times in a row. But what you do, like, not okay. to get totally sidetracked, but for the advanced people or the people listening that have larger companies, is you take a strategy like this, and let's say you target like six really exclusive neighborhoods where you want to build up your route density. You want to have pockets and clusters of neighbors that are all your client because you build yep. massive momentum when you're strategically marketing to the right people and the neighbors are people that already give you money, right? There's massive benefit. You get a higher close rate. There's more social proof. You literally become a nightmare to compete with when you start taking over entire neighborhoods. And our tool 
Yeah, when everybody just uses that guy. Your, I mean, your trucks, time, your, yeah, your just, cars are in and out all the time. It becomes ridiculous, right? So you take a strategy like what we do with our automatic neighbor mailings and these sequences going out. You couple it with a geo-targeted Facebook ad with a similar type of offer. You use some yard signs at the entryway and exit to the neighborhoods. Your vehicles are in there all the time. It's when you start adding different channels is when it gets really silly and it just gets ridiculous as far as profitability. Right? Maybe a little company can't do all of that stuff, so I'm not trying to stress them out. Uh, it just speaks to like the logic and the power behind what we're talking about. Well, just to keep it simple, if I want to take 100 people, and good Lord, that's, I, just, I have one little client say, uh, or one little neighborhood, I think 100 is, is a pretty good, you know, it's a chunk of a neighbor or a neighborhood, um, you know, it's a good little, you know, bit of houses. And I, for 200 bucks or 250 bucks, whatever it works out to be, I can send over a three week span, a hundred people, three pieces. I just, for 200 bucks, I can't see not getting a customer, just common sense, right? Without having to even do math. Just like how, how could that possibly be that all hundred of them say no to the right offer and the right, uh, copy and they're the right people right. three times times a hundred. It just, it's very unlikely. And the other that. cool thing about direct mail, direct mail is actually on the rise right now because everything's been digitized. You know, the yellow pages are dead. Everything's dead. Everything's yeah. online, especially with millennials who are, you know, like in their thirties and make six figures. A lot of them, not some of them are lazy and live in the mom's basement, but I digress. The, <laughs> what I'm saying is <laughs> mail is starting to work really well just because of the age we live in. So it's not going anywhere. It's, in fact, it's going to get, it's going to go up. But the other cool part about physical marketing is that the shelf life of the thing that you send them is really long. It's very normal for people to take a card like this and to stick it on their fridge and to call you six months later. But when they see a digital ad, that's never going to happen. So that's one of the big benefits of it. And that's why you got to be consistent over the long, you got to play the long game with anything that you're doing. Uh, but direct mail is really cool because they can touch it and they can hold it. And if it's got a picture of their house or their neighborhood on it or has a really compelling offer, they'll hang on to it. Yeah, I think the the open rates typically for a warm list that knows, likes, and trusts you on email might be 30%. Um, mm -hmm. And the chances that they're going to read or engage and not just throw it away once it's gone, it's gone, right? You know, you get 100 emails a day, an email from seven days ago that had an offer for window cleaning, you know, fat chance that's ever going to get done. Right. But just like you said, the open rate of a, of a postcard is near 100%, right? Now, they may not engage. They may not look at your message, but they're it's gonna they're going to touch it. And even if they're just like you said, they're standing over their garbage can waiting to chuck, 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 chuck. But they at least touch it. They're at least going to open it. It's already open. Right? Exactly. It's in front of them. That's exactly right. Um, and when you when you throw in a picture of them taking their kids from school, I mean, sorry, <laughs> a picture of their house. <laughs> that's a word. I, I, I can't remember if that was the first episode or the second episode. If that was in the first episode, go back and you'll get that joke. Uh, if you customize it, then, yeah, the engagement's got to be. I mean, just if you just, like I said, use the common sense. Nothing you're saying sounds crazy. And I love that because, again, we've got lots of people just starting out that they're like, I can't afford a $5,000 a month kind of marketing thing, but I can afford a hundred bucks. I can send a hundred postcards or, you know, three postcards to 30 people, uh, give or take. I know it's $2 and seven cents, whatever. Well, if it's um, okay. Like I'd, love to, talk, I'd love to talk a little bit about those little guys. Like, because like, I don't recommend that Please. people just throw money at marketing. Like there's a process to it. In fact, we have a whole teaching on which months you should never spend money on marketing and how to figure that out for your business. There's two th ways you can, you can get, do marketing. It's either invest your time or invest your dollars. And investing a lot of dollars kind of yep. is a luxury that comes with getting a foundation and getting scale and having cash flow, right? But our system still works in other ways for the little guy that has a tiny budget because we have a relationship marketing suite. They, at a minimum, they should be doing follow-ups to their current customers just to increase loyalty and decrease you know, referrals, things like that. It's very inexpensive to send a thank you card and a little letter or a greeting card at Christmas to your, to your list for a couple bucks. That by itself, it really is like the foundational thing. I, I call that fixing the holes in your bucket. Um, most people are obsessed with turning on the spigot of water and spraying water into their bucket, and that's getting new customers is getting these customers like really sexy and it's really cool and it's like awesome but what's happening is when you don't have a retention or a loyalty strategy in place at all which almost no one does people are going out the bottom of your bucket well you don't know that they left you don't know that they forgot the name of your company and hired someone else not because they didn't like you but just because you didn't engage and you didn't have a long-term relationship they're gone and so even if you're getting a new customer you're losing one that also causes people to plateau um, so you have to have something in place for that uh, just to stay engaged with your customers throughout the whole year. And our system automates that process too. And you can send emails and like you mentioned, ringless voicemails. There's other little 
cool things you can you can put as part of like a drip sequence, a relationship based one. That is like step one, right? For the little guy, make sure you have raving fan customers that buy from you all the time and are constantly reminded to refer you. After that's in place, let's go experiment with neighbor marketing and radius bomb and all this other stuff. Yeah, let me, I'm going to end with my kind of response to that. I'm going to give you the opportunity to give your last big thought, your one thing that you want to make sure that you impart and then we'll, we'll get out of here. But the one thing I wanted to, 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 to touch on is the, I think I do this in my, in the live event, we talk about the value of customers and the sexy customer, the fun customer, the, the, the pretty looking blonde is the one that we don't have that we don't know, right? This new check. But in the reality, that's almost our least valuable prospect, our best prospect by far is our current customer to get him or her or them to buy again. Very easy to get them to spend more money. Most people forget about that. Why don't you buy more often or spend more money when you do buy or, uh, you know, that by far is the lowest hanging fruit and probably the least amount of time we spend on marketing that said, you're okay, fine. Once I do that, which I guarantee you're not, but once I've got that locked down now, can I go get new customers? Well, you can, but then you'd be missing your second most valuable prospect, which is your previous customers. People get weird in their head like they think it's some sort of a they use me and now they don't so we're mortal enemies and if i see them at the at the at the laundromat they're going to you know lunge for me violently <laughs> <laughs> they, people think that man and the reality is they they lost their job or they um their friend you know Susie decided to come clean their place and then Susie broke something and now they hate that and they're just waiting for you to call them back right the reality is um they are they already know that you've already overcome the biggest thing, which is fear. I don't know who you are. You're going to be in my house. This is, I don't know. I, I don't know, right? I, everyone has a fear of the unknown. Better the devil you know than the devil you don't. I promise you that is by far your second most uh, doable thing. Then and only then, so you've got your, your current customers are easiest. Market them first. Your previous customers are your second easiest. Market to those second and people avoid them like the plague for some inexplicable reason. And then the third is someone that knows, likes, and trusts you, right? So if you're sending things like uh, just value, like this podcast, I've asked you for $0. Um, but there's a lot of value. You guys will come to me and go, oh my gosh, Josh was the smartest guy that I've ever met and Mike's not terrible either. I should give them money or ask them for help or whatever. Um, so people that know, like, and trust you is your third best thing. And that would be the, you know, to, to in the conversation we're having maybe the neighbors of the people or referral or something like that fourth best finally would be strangers that are in your niche right <laughs> we always want to start and put all our time there and that's actually the least profitable so that's my rant for the day joshua i'm going to give you the last word before i uh end this party give one last big thought idea concept thing that you want to share with cleaning nation go all right well first of all i a thousand percent agree with everything you just said and it's not just because me and you agree on it. It's just that is the path. This is what the large profitable automated businesses do. This is how you do it. You have to uh, plug the holes in your bucket. You have to do those things. It's foundational and it's worth your efforts to focus on it. And it can be inexpensive and simple, but don't miss that, which most little businesses do because they're terrified they're not going to make $500 next week to buy groceries. They gloss over building simple systems, right? Uh, and my big final thought is that everybody listening to this right now already has a fully systemized business right now. And this was an epiphany that I had that blew my brain apart by my friend, Michael Kaplan, the guy with the $20 million carpet cleaning business. He, he said this to me one time. He said, Josh, look, every, every system in your business is perfectly calibrated to give you exactly the result that you're getting. So when you look at your business, if there's pain, if there's anxiety, if it's not working, if it feels out of control, it is a result of the current systems you have. Now, maybe you don't follow up with your customers. That's still a system. It's a zero touch follow up system. <laughs> maybe, maybe you are super negative to your employees and you have a bad attitude and you're a bad leader. That's a system. It's just a really bad one. So the question isn't, should I systemize things? Should I look at ways to stay that? You're already doing it. The real question is, are the, is the current way that you're doing things serving you well? Is it getting you to your mountaintop, to your outcome, Whatever you're using, your business is designed to serve you and your family. That's its function. And so all these moving parts are important, and it's your job as a CEO to figure it out. And if you have no employees and it's just you, guess what? You're still a CEO. And when you start thinking like that, things will start to shift for you. If I could say it better, I would, my friend, but I can't. That is perfect. Couldn't agree more. All right, Cleaning Nation, I am going to make your life 12% better and take away any, any excuse you have for doing the my least favorite thing about this podcast, which is people hang out with me and the people I have on and go, that guy was smart. These ideas are the best. Wow, am I motivated? And then they go back 
back to their life, do exactly nothing, and get literally no benefit other than feeling good for 40 minutes. I love hanging out with you, and I love that I can make you feel good and hopefully encourage you and, and, and all that stuff. There's not to say there's no value in that. But the real value and, and benefit to you comes in when you actually take the words that we talk and this, this encouragement and do something with it. So you have two choices. Choice one is go, that was great. Joshua's smart. Everything's great. Go back to your life and have the exact same results that you have now. And if you got great results now, God bless you. Go do that. If you were here because you would like something different, the systems that you have now aren't working and you would like to upgrade them, um, go to sendgym.com or actually growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash sendgym. Um, either one will get you to sendgym.com. There's two things I want you to do and neither of them cost you any money. First, um, I love that Joshua says, don't give me a bunch of money. Don't just you know shotgun this thing. Come, learn, test. I don't want your, your $2,000 today. I want your 12 bucks or whatever it's gonna cost to test this thing and start making money so we can have a real relationship that makes us both... Uh, uh, move forward at kind of a rapid pace in the future. So go there, get the information. It is totally free. On top of that, just in case, I know there's some of you and I want to come out there and just get you um, or going, I don't literally have a penny, Mike. I have no nickels to rub together. I have nothing. If that's the case, go get a job. You shouldn't be a business owner. But um, if, if that's you, Joshua's given 105 credits where you can send out 105 postcards, seven brownies in a box, 200 of those ringless voicemails that we talked about delivered, not attempted. Um, if you go to growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash send gym. So if you just go to sendgym.com, you can get all the information. You can uh, get all the stuff we talked about. But if you go to growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash send gym, you'll get those free credits. You can get started. And by golly, let's just do this. You know, let's, let's be a gambler. And I, I, I would never say that, but let me finish. Let's be a gambler. Go there. Use his 105 credits, right? Get a customer. Now we're on house money. Take the money that you make from that customer, reinvest it in your marketing system. So it's not just a one-off thing that I can pay rent this month, but I can change my business and my life forever. So go to growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash send gym, get all the free information, get the free credits. Please, please, please do not leave the scene of this podcast without taking taking action. Do it now. I'll see you there. Congratulations. You are now 16% smarter. Still can't get enough cleaning goodness? Go to www.growmycleaningcompany.com for more of the good stuff. Ever want to be rich and famous? Owners of cleaning companies as well as industry experts can apply to be featured on the show by emailing our producer Natalie at support at growmycleaningcompany.com. Until then, don't miss out on all the latest cleaning industry lovin' at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now.